Hey all here, OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Lenovo Watch 9. Over the past few months, this has become one of the most popular low-cost wearables on the market, selling at only 20 bucks. It's called a hybrid smartwatch, so you shouldn't confuse this as a true competitor to the likes of Android Wear, Galaxy Watch, and Apple Watches, because it doesn't have a display, so it can't actually show you the contents of notifications, and it's missing a lot of those more fancy sports tracking tools. But what I can do is very basic fitness tracking, such as steps, calories burned, and automatic sleep tracking when you just wear it to bed. So it can be worn as just a regular watch, and you also don't have to charge it every night. The battery will last for about one year before you need to replace it, and it's less distracting, meant more as a middle ground between just a regular watch and a true smartwatch for folks that are trying to experiment a little bit. Otherwise, the Lenovo Watch 9 does use Bluetooth 5.0 to connect to both Android and iOS devices. And for the price, you're getting a surprisingly good construction quality with sapphire mirror glass on the top, which should be scratch resistant and also a steel outer shell. So it seems to be a pretty good value as far as the hardware is concerned. It does have a luminous pointer, which means that they are glow in the dark. So you can still read these hands, even again in darker environments. It is of course waterproof, so you can wear it when taking a shower or taking a swim and it should still survive. Packaging here is very simple. We just have a QR code that you can scan to download the app for iOS or for Android with some basic specs, but they're all printed in Chinese. And we have just the watch, which you can see is already running here. So that's a little concerning. Not sure how long it's been sitting in storage. But all right, so taking a closer look at the design and construction of the watch first, as aforementioned, the construction quality is really good. It's definitely a more expensive feeling than the price would suggest. The steel frame here feels very hefty and the design of the dial is modern and pretty clean looking. There's just one crown key that you can tap on once to activate a very small LED light that is for going into the Bluetooth mode for pairing. And on the back, we can see we have a stainless steel aluminum and it says 5 ATM, so it is going to be very waterproof. And we also have a silicon band here, which is very breathable as well. You can also remove this just like on any other standard watch if you want to change it out for a different style. I want to point out that Lenovo has also released the Watch 10 side by side with the Watch 9. This one is more expensive because it does have a very small OLED display that you can read some basic information on and it does also have a heart rate sensor. The app is called Lenovo Watch. It's a free download in the Play Store and also in the iOS Store and uh, it's going to work for both the Watch 9 and the Watch 10. We can tap on the Watch 9 here and we can confirm by shaking the watch or pressing any key or button to confirm and it's successfully connected now. It's telling us to enter the time manually, even though we do have a digital time on the phone already. So uh, let's try and start the calibration process. It's one of the cooler parts of the watch. It's going to now turn and get to the correct time, which you see is now 420 the same. That's matching up on the digital time of the phone. So now we have the interface here, which is quite simple. We can log in or sign into an account to save our profile settings, things like height that is used to calibrate your stride length. So it's better at detecting number of steps. We can pull down to refresh the data and update it. And we can also tap on my watch to take a look at the battery status, as well as the kind of firmware information we can go back and recalibrate the time if we want to. We can also take a look at some other functions, which is called funny functions for whatever reason. You can use it as a remote shutter. So basically for uh, kind of using the watch as a selfie remote. So I can just tap on the crown key here once. It's gonna vibrate and it takes an image on the phone. Like other fitness trackers, you can also set up alarms. So maybe at 8 a.m. it's gonna vibrate to try and wake you up in the morning. It also has the ability to toggle through different types of reminders. So vibrating only for calls, the most interesting function on here is called heart rate because as aforementioned, there's obviously no optical heart rate sensor. And so it's basically doing this using the camera. And what's funny is it's using the flash in the camera. So you have to put your hand over the kind of camera lens. And after holding still for a few seconds, it tries to estimate your heart rate. It's obviously not the most accurate thing in the world, but uh, you know, it is there if you want it. Obviously, this is a feature that isn't unique to the Lenovo Watch. You can find this in the Play Store already as kind of a uh, poor man's heart rate monitoring feature. And of course, it also will smudge your camera lens a lot easier. Finally, I'll mention that the watch also has a do not disturb mode. So when you toggle this on, it's not going to push any notifications over. So you won't receive, let's say, vibrations during a meeting. And now for kind of the not so good parts of the app. So again, it was 
I believe, originally written for the Chinese market. So there are still parts which uh, aren't translated that well into English. So, so for instance, if you want to do something called My Plan, which is supposed to be creating your custom exercise, the interface is quite confusing. So what you're supposed to do is write a description. So go get coffee or buy something at the grocery store or happy birthday uh, to a friend and then set a time to remind you and of course a label. But it doesn't really work that well. If you tap on done, there's a lot of bugs. It says set a label for your plan, but I've obviously already clicked on a label here, but it's just not working. So the steps here are kind of confusing. So from a UI UX perspective, there is still a lot of work that Lenovo can be doing in terms of making the app better. What is good, however, is Lenovo is bringing out updates. Uh, when I started using this for a few minutes, it did roll out an update to the watch that uh, claims to improve the sleep tracking algorithm, and it pushed that firmware update over uh, very quickly. In terms of my exercises, you can track a few sports, such as running, as well as climbing, riding, and swimming, but again, you don't get continuous heart rate monitoring, and all the tracking is essentially done on your phone. So if you tap on go, for instance, it's going to start that mode, it's going to start the time, the pace information is using GPS from your phone's antenna to estimate how fast you're moving, and also the calories burned. So essentially the watch isn't doing anything at all. So again, some of these features are basically just software-based. So a quick size comparison with some other wearables, this is the Tick Watch 2, which I think is actually quite similar in terms of design language. They're both very modern, elegant watches. In terms of thickness, you can tell that Lenovo also isn't that much thinner than a regular smartwatch. With that being said, it's definitely smaller in terms of dimensions than a sports smartwatch, such as the Macefit Pace. And here it is on my wrist next to a Xiaomi Mi Band 3, a fitness tracker. So you can tell that in terms of overall thickness, it is about the same. Uh, but in terms of uh, in terms of looking classier, for sure, it uh, seems like something more expensive. But again, in terms of functionality, it actually doesn't have quite as many features. If you are in a business setting, then obviously this is going to be a lot more acceptable than wearing something like a fitness tracker. And again, when it comes to the wearing experience, it is very comfortable because the silicon band here is uh, very breathable. At the same time, the watch itself is just right in terms of size. It's not too large, it's not too small. And I do think that this action is pretty cool. Whenever you are syncing up your information or setting up the time, the fact that it automatically spins itself around and around and here's what that luminous dial looks like in the dark. So indeed you are able to read it in addition to the four marks corresponding to the hours. Moving into performance and accuracy, let's talk about the step count. First, I would say that it does all right. When I compared it with the Xiaomi Mi Band 3, the number of steps that it uh, registered was about the same. And it also gives you a fun fact, which is the distance converted into a number of bills. So you can see that 0.05 kilometers is equal to about the length of 300 bills. So that's kind of a cute feature. In terms of tracking when you've fallen asleep, basically if you just stop moving your wrist for more than 15 minutes, it thinks you've fallen asleep, even if sometimes you're just sitting there on a chair uh, in a certain position. So it's not the most accurate thing, and uh, sometimes it overestimates the sleep that you are receiving. So that is pretty much the Lenovo Watch 9. Again, it's not the most exciting thing in the world because it's essentially an analog watch with a few smart features sprinkled on top. Even at this low price though, it faces stiff competition from the likes of the Mi Band 2 and Mi Band 3, which definitely have more features, more practical uh, use cases. With that being said, if you're trying to get a smartwatch for work, something that looks professional to match your attire, then this is definitely something that you would maybe consider taking a closer look at. It's not going to do everything, but at the end of the day, I don't think it really needs to. It's going to discreetly give you notifications, albeit it's a little hard to distinguish between them because you can't actually see the contents. Maybe in the future they could update the software or to have different types of vibrations for different notifications, like vibrating once for a text message, two times for an email, but right now they're all the same. And the basic fitness tracking features and the smart photography features work well enough. Just know that this isn't really a true smartwatch, it's more like a fitness tracker with an analog face on top. Uh, that isn't going to work with for everyone, but uh, for certain folks, I guess it is going to be an interesting alternative to regular fitness bands. So you can check out more details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the Lenovo Watch 9.